Hi, this is Tim Lightfellow in Kingdom of Ontario, Society for Creative Anachronism. I had someone ask if I could try and the best I can here, try to show how I get the thin lines on my cresting work. I'm hoping to maybe go over a couple different tips. First, I'll start out with thin lines and then I'll mention just some other things that might be helpful. Um, so the first thing to me is knowing your brushes. I, for the longest time, thought that for a thin line brush, I needed something with really very few bristles. And then I've settled on this particular brush does really great thin lines. The problem with it right now is, which I don't think is going to show on camera, um, it's already starting to show the usage I've given it. Some of the bristles are starting to separate out in that. So uh, I have this other one from the same set that I haven't used yet, and I'm going to see what I get with this one also. So I'm going to be testing a brush while I demonstrate uh, what I'm, how I'm doing thin paint lines. So I have a sample cresting uh, stick here that I've tested out different patterns and different paints. Like I did some some tests on some different shades of gold to see which ones I liked best, things like that. Uh, so I've got a stick. Um, there's already sealant on this, so it's I'm painting on the sealant, which is how I normally make uh, my arrows and bolts. So this is set up just as if I were actually painting uh, a an arrow or a bolt. I'm going to use, in this case, I happen to have a lot of extra pink, which I'm hoping will show up well on the camera since browns, golds are not going to. Just one second. Okay, I had to blow the top air bubble off. So, the first thing when it comes to painting thin lines is having a paint that has enough liquid to it. Um, I've been doing some with this gold and it's dried out just slightly. And so I've noticed that when I'm trying to get, I can get thin lines if I'm really diligent about cleaning the brush between each one. Um, Otherwise, it very quickly starts to clump on the brush and then clump or make thicker lines on the uh, shaft. So there's one tip is keeping the brush clean enough that you don't have the paint clumping on the end of the brush and causing thicker lines when you paint it. Uh, next thing is with most painting, you don't want to get a ton of paint on the end. You want just a bit. Um, and then what I've found, and I'm kind of doing this at a weird angle, so hopefully this turns out right. So what I've found is uh, I use this ruler in front. This helps me. A lot of people will draw their pattern out on a piece of paper like this one, and then they'll hang it here, and they'll use that for their markings. Um, as you can see, I used to do that, but what I've found is for me, the better method seems to be just using this ruler because uh, it has nice fine gradients. There is a ruler on this jig. I'm using a spin right, uh, but it's separated out more than I like. OK, so what I do is I figure out where I'm going. Like, let's say I'm going to put this as seven and three quarters. And what I'll tend to do is I'll put my finger or hand right down there and I'll put the brush against it which helps me guide the brush down to the shaft without it bouncing around. The other thing is um, patience. You want to go slow. You want to just kind of push it to the shaft until you start seeing the line show up. And be right about there. You basically just push it just hard enough to get the line to show up. And that's, of course, not really showing. It's right there. 
let me pull it out and show the camera. So that's that pink line right there. And again, what I'm doing is I'm just barely going until it starts. Let me let me grab a darker color paint and see if it'll be easier for the camera to see. Because that pink, well, it's it shows when I hold it up. It doesn't really show until I hold it up, and that's not the most helpful. So I have the blue I've been using. Let me, um, these are all acrylics, by the way. So I'm just they're water based. I'm using water to just get the brush wet and to clean it. Uh, again, the paints I've ended up finding that I like are called our Angelus brand because uh, they seem to have a good amount of water in them. And the benefits of that are um, the thin lines. And when I do the thick lines, uh, most of the acrylics, you can really feel it when you rub your hand over them. You can feel that it elevates from the shaft to the color. These, as they dry, as they lose all that, uh, the the fluid and leave just the coloring and paint, um, they actually dry nice and flat. So if you're doing things like cresting under fletches, it gives a flatter surface to stick the uh, fletches on because the taller the surface, the more it can cause issues with getting the glue on there solidly. Okay, so I'm going to try the same thing with blue to hopefully be more visible to the camera. So I'm going to pick a spot. I'm going to hold my finger here and hold this against it because that helps guide it without bouncing side to side. I'm going to push it just till I start seeing the line show up. And then I'm going to push it just a little more to get the line and back off. And hopefully that was a little more visible to the camera um, and again this is actually the brush that's starting to mess i'm starting to have problems with so uh, the blue actually spread out just a little bit nothing i would be worried about but if you can can really see them the pink is actually a little bit narrower of a line uh, so the next thing i'm going to do again just to let you see the process and Reinforce how I'm doing this. And I'm sharing the things I'm thinking about as I do it. And there's always the chance that I'm doing something just out of habit that I'm not thinking about. So I figure if I let you watch me do a few lines, maybe you'll pick up on something I'm doing that I'm not really thinking about and don't think to mention on the video. And I you want to start out with the bristles slightly wet. And grab some blue. I'm going to go the other side of the pink line now. And I'm going to just come into it. Okay. So that one actually gave me a thinner blue line, possibly even thinner than the pink. So that's the concept for thin lines. Um, with most of these brushes, the harder you push into this, the uh, shaft, the more it's going to actually spread out the bristles and it's going to widen that line. So that's why you're trying to just touch it. Just go until you start seeing the color showing up on it and then give it a moment and see if you need to push just a little harder uh, to, to make it a solid line because the shafts aren't always spinning quite exactly right. And so sometimes you have to push just a little more to get that full line. And if it's not full, you'll see as it spins, you'll kind of see it. Um, it almost looks like it's strobing or something um, if there's not a solid line of color there. So hopefully that helps with that. Now, 
And I'm going to say that I'm happy with the results of testing this to replace my thin line brush because those are good lines. I like that. Okay, so that one may almost be a little too thin. You actually lose a little bit of the blue effect. It starts turning a little more blue green if it gets too thin and you don't get enough of the blue. Okay, next thing I was going to do is talk about thick lines um, because there are some tricks here and I think I shared some of this in my other video when I was discussing them, but again, I don't think in that video that I had things set up and was able to actually do painting and demonstrate what I was talking about. So I'm going to try and actually demonstrate things. So again, I've actually just been using this for a set of bolts, so it's all still a little bit wet. It doesn't hurt to just dip it in the water a little and give it a little brush. So with the thicker, when you're doing wider, and again, I'll do the same thing. Now this one has a very slight angle to the brush edge, so I'll actually tend to come in at an angle so that I'm hitting the shaft flat with the brush edge. But what I, I try to do, and I try and hit it slowly, and what you'll probably see, let's see if it works, is it'll first make contact in one or two spots, and then it'll slowly spread out as I push the brush in. And again, I'm just barely pushing the brush. That doesn't take much at all. And then, then when you're pulling the brush away, you also don't want to just go, okay, I'm done, and, and yank the brush back. You want to pull it back slowly because it'll actually still pull some of the paint back off. So if you accidentally pressed a spot too hard and got an extra thin layer of paint, if you pull back kind of slowly, it can actually help pull some of the paint off of the brush and make sure that it's filled in. Um, Another effect of pushing too hard, again, I'm going to paint right next to it, so I'm hoping this will show, is let's say I just cram this into the, the shaft. What ends up happening, it's hard to do this because I'm so used to not doing it. So what you see is, first of all, the paint spread out more, but the more important thing to note is it's really thin in the middle and there are these big bulges of paint on both ends which the camera of course doesn't show very well but so you end up with these lumps of paint on the ends and you end up with thin paint in the middle so you're trying to avoid that and by doing it the, the same way just going slowly letting the paint start getting picked up by the shaft and pushed just enough to get the coat you want uh, can it fix that or avoid that. Um, now, since conveniently I have two wet spots of paint next to each other, if I wanted to fill that in, I'll grab a little more paint and I'll hit the center and fill it in. And then I'm actually looking, it's going to depend on, you know, how good your eyes are and how obvious it is in the paint, but sometimes what you'll see when you look at the paint is you'll see thicker and thinner spots in the paint. So what I can sometimes do, and I'm working at an angle I'm not used to, but I'll try this. What I can sometimes do is just gently go in and hit it with the brush. I'm not really trying to add paint. I'm actually trying to either take paint away or at least smooth out where the paint is. And that can let you get a more even coat because if you're going to put lines on top, the more even and, and uh, flat the surface when it's dry, the easier it is to put lines over the top. If you have bulges and bumps, then it's going to make your solid, your thin lines look bad because it's going to push the brush around or get big clumps and areas with no paint. So those are some of the tips I have. One last thing I will point out as a a uh, possible tip is that paint at the ends, so when you do a large section like that, sometimes, especially if there's any 
wobble at all in the shaft as it spins, you can end up with the very end of the paint having just a little wobble in it. And, you know, maybe you're okay with that, or if you're like me, you're, it may be a frustration, and you may sit here staring at it going, but no, that needs to be better. So one of the benefits to doing the thin lines and the, the um, essentially finishing lines, as it were, is not only does it give it that detail, right, like the gold on the black and gold around the black bars, not only does it help give it that detail and that kind of more complete, more, yeah, more complete look to me. It, it looks more done if I have that. Um, but the other part of that is it can help you straighten out those slight wobbles on the ends of the color areas. Um, so I can't, I don't see any here that I can really demonstrate it on. Um, but basically, so if this had a wobble at the end and this were dry, I wouldn't want to paint wet paint over wet paint. But if this were dry and there's a wobble at the end, let's say I go in and I do a thin black line on each edge, I can actually put the black line right where it's right up against it or just slightly over part of the edge of the blue. And so what it can do is it can end up covering up that wobble and giving you a nice straight black line where there was a wobbly blue line in this case, whatever color you happen to be working with. So I hope that information helps. Um, trying to think through fast before I close the video, if there's any other tips I can suggest. One thing for me with using Angelus is Angelus paint. I mentioned how much moisture is in it. The, the one effect that has on me uh, with using it is that means I paint a color like this blue and I have to set it aside for about a day to make sure it's dry before I paint anything on it. Um, but the other thing about it that I have recently discovered is a lot of times when we're doing cresting, we don't want to do, say, a yellow on a blue because yellow is a, such a light color. Um, I can actually turn that off and I can grab one, one of the bolts I'm painting to give an example. So there's actually three yellow lines here. And you'll notice the camera's having trouble even just differentiating that it's separate lines. Um, and it's such a light color, normally you wouldn't want to paint that onto a dark blue. You might put a white first and then put the yellow to, to help make the yellow stand out. What I'm discovering with the Angelus is I actually can paint the yellow directly onto the blue uh, once the blue's dry. And the yellow does stand out without having something under it. Uh, and I think, again, that's the characteristic specific to the Angelus paint, because when I've tried that with uh, the, you know, fabric store over the counter acrylics, um, didn't work. I'd have to do a bunch of coats of yellow or I'd have to do white under it, then yellow in order to get the yellow to stand out. Otherwise, it just kind of blends in and looks like greenish or, you know, you just don't see it. So um, don't be afraid to experiment. Have something like this. Um, I have conveniently, if you know, if I, you break an arrow or a bolt, it can become a nice shaft for test patterns um, because then you're painting on your standard sealant that if that's how you normally paint. If you normally paint on plain wood, then, you know, if you have some that are, uh, outside of your matched shafts, or maybe you go buy a wooden dowel at the hardware store just for testing the paints on to see, you know, if you're testing how, what you think of a pattern or something, or if a brush, how well a brush works, uh, can give you a way to do that without, you know, using up your actual arrow shafts. So, you know, 
carefully put that back on the uh, drying rack because that blue paint was wet still. And I think that pretty much covers uh, the things I wanted to show and wanted to talk about. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. You can either reach out to me or comment on the video. If I post it right, it should allow comments. I am always eager to learn more, to learn other ways of doing things, and can't do that if people don't share. So uh, feedback, always welcome. Thank you for watching. I hope that this has been helpful. And I wish everyone who's working on arrows luck on what they're doing and have fun kind of pushing your skills and, and working on improving them. I know I have. Thank you.